Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone and welcome to This Is Football. Welcome to a special edition show based on events that happened earlier on today on the spaces. You know, a crazy world. A crazy, crazy, crazy world in which people from all over the world just speak to each other and have conversations. And today, the conversation was on FSG, it was on Redman TV, it was a whole lot of drama, and we're here to discuss what happened to today. And we're here to talk about why we're FSG out to begin with, because, you know, many people think, you know, it's just that apparently we want FSG out because we want them to spend 500 million every single, uh, you know, every single... <laughs> Every single transfer window, which is far from the truth. So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, look, everyone watching us right now or on the replay, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're ready to do so. Everyone right now, please like, like, subscribe, subscribe. And big up to everyone who showed us so much love and support on the watch along on multiple different things that we've done this year. You guys have been absolutely brilliant in January. This January has been record breaking. So big up to you guys. Big up Rock McAllister. Who's Rock? Ross. Big up to Michael. Big up Olaf. Uh, I think that's Jay. Big up Captain Sal. Big up Pablo. Mo Patel. Muhammad Ammar. Uncle Mike. Uh, Chon Bay is in the house. Big up to Hassi. Big up to Gunburn. Make sure you all listen to him and like and subscribe now. Big up to Infinite. Big up to Tamps. Um, a big up to Stephen O'Connor. Zlatan is in the building. Um, big up to Muhammad Ammar. Big up to Adamson. Big up to C.D. Fisher. Big up to you guys, man. Lewis is in the building. Mac and Cheese is in the building. Um, Barry Sweeney. Cardier is in the building. Lou, I think that's that's Ahmed. Big up to you, Habibi. Big up to Malgash. Uh, big up to U.M. Big up to Adamson, Arthur, Alex, SBR, Amir Ali, A.M.E., Shea Gooch, um, Konstantinos, Big up to you guys, man. Noah, Vernon, Yusuf, Kemshai, PM, Uzumaki, Noah. Big up to you guys. I'm seeing a few new names as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, you guys. Anyway, so look, big up to Prosperance Mind. Um, and Anthony Baller, Mark Henry. No chance. No chance in hell. Big up to Arian. Jacko Lantern. Big up to you guys. Big up to all of you guys. Listen, big up to, to you, whether you're watching now or on the replay. Hit that like button, subscribe. So look, now joining us on the channel, I could do this for, for, for the next 40 minutes. You guys know my thoughts, though. It's, it's good to get differing opinions. Today, I felt like this guy was probably performing the best on the spaces today. Unlike Nasser's fraudulent player ratings that he done on, on, on Twitter, in which he gave me a separate and called me Henderson. I, mean, I just ignored it. I, I muted the conversation the moment I saw Henderson next to my name. You know, today was 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 a conversation between the two worlds. You know, the, the spaces which we refer to as the streets <laughs> and Redman TV, you know, who we asked questions of today. Um, and joining us on the channel to discuss it is someone who is actually part of the streets and part of YouTube. He's someone that does both. Is someone that is the founder of the KDL, also known as the Klopp Defense League. And today, he was once again indirectly defending his boy <laughs> in the strongest way possible. See, this is what I'm talking about. See, Nasser out here giving him a six out of seven. Bro, what, what are you on about? Captain Sal knows the truth. See, people already know. I don't even have to intro him. They already know who performed today. Joining us on the channel is the owner of club defense league man like kurdish how are you doing bro big up man good to be back good to be back big up everyone in in the comment section big up my boy pablo big up Ilyas, captain sal big up everyone man it's good to be back it's it's been a day hey it's been a day mm. today <laughs> mm. and, and, and i want to get into it as well because this like people if you don't know the back back story of it I'm going to tell you my perspective and Kurt will tell you his. Big up to Chambe who's, who's sending me a super chat. says, Redman TV is sellout. They don't represent me or true LFC fans. I hate that channel with a the passion. They are just vibe FC, FSG. They are the opposite of me. Bro, you know what happened today? I was sat there and I was eating some fried chicken. And then I get two WhatsApp calls from Nasser. And I'm like, why the fuck is Nasser calling me? And then he DMs me. He's like, Chris Jack is on the space. Chris Pajak is on the space. Come now, join now, join now. 
like okay okay hell like i just put my chicken down and i'm like i'm coming this is the thing that triggered all of this is a video i'm about to play as well that kind of triggered this entire thing that gary paul told me about yesterday so i'm gonna just play it for 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 everyone for the masses so they can listen to it for 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 themselves um big up to you chombe thank you for the super chat so let me just quickly let me make sure my dms are closed first okay count up Boom. Let me just play the video. This is the thing that started it all right here. Here. They don't have faces on them. They, they don't speak out. To be fair um, to what's the guy's name? Is it Hassan or something like that? Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think it's Hassan. I think he's got a YouTube channel. To be fair to him, he speaks and you can see his face. So whatever you think about his opinions, whether and I don't really know what his opinions are, but I've seen clips of him. At least he's there talking about it with his real face. Yeah. So fair fucks to him. Whereas all the others are just Twitter accounts with pictures of Klopp, or or even worse, their Twitter at is like a mixture of Coutinho and Klopp. Yeah. Like one of the fellas who absolutely tried to rinse us and Klopp. Like, yeah. And and this is the thing where it's like. You, you can't stand for something if you're not showing your face. That's the biggest thing. Can we just do this as agony rant? Have... And this later on as well was it was kind of yeah. revealed to me. So let me just play this as well, you know. To make a, a make a strong opinion, and that's what I'd say on the FSGL. And goes back to your point. There just seems to be the people who do put the faces to it, and I don't, I don't really, I, I'm aware of that lad, but I've never watched any of his any of his stuff. Um, but I, I know I've seen never watched any of his stuff. Before. My ass, by the way. Everyone here that follows me and knows the story knows that paul mason followed man then unfollowed man after my first fsd out tweet so he don't know me my ass he knows exactly who i am you know so big up to chomby big up everyone so this is the backstory and then they drop into the space and then we speak to them kurdish talk to me from from your perspective because you were there from the start i wasn't you know what 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 started this entire conversation what started this all it was interesting bro i I was on, um, so I saw the video. I saw the video, and and actually, I, one of the guys is on the space. I don't want to mention names, but from from who joins our space has made a very good point because actually, some people like to keep their privacy. You know, some people work, some people are on Twitter and, and don't want to show their face. But in that video, he's he's insinuating and, and and telling us that actually, if if you don't want to show your face and and you know you want to get rid of that privacy, your views don't matter, and it's. It's almost saying, you know, it's it's a it's a big up to you. But what he's doing is actually being critical of a lot of the fan base who, again, like to keep that privacy when when they talk about things. So I I didn't like the video, but I went on the space, and this is the the funny thing of Sam. Anybody on that space will tell you, I was defending Redmen TV. So before you came on, I was saying, look, we just need to be a little bit easy on these guys. You know, we need to be careful with the words we use because a lot of the time is just you know, uneducated views rather than them actually being intentional about certain things that, that we may feel. And then Chris jumped on on the space. And I thought Chris was okay. I'm going to be completely honest. I thought I thought Chris was okay. And then Paul jumped on the space. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. And, you know, I've had, I've had a few hours to reflect on it. I'll be completely honest. I, I kind of just avoided going back on spaces in the afternoon. And it was a really good chance to have a, a genuine conversation about football from two polar opposite sides and, and two polar views where, you know, where we stand and where they stand. And actually, from the moment that Paul came and that dialect opened, it went completely the, the opposite way. You know, we asked football in conversations and they were asking personal questions. Um, I don't want to go into the political side of everything, but they asked you at, at what I would class as a very targeted question, if, if that makes sense. A, a loaded question, which I felt like they, 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 they knew what they were asking before they even started having that conversation. And actually, I, I didn't enjoy that because, and then this is where I kind of lost my head a little bit in, in, the, in the midst of the whole space, because we had to have a football and conversation and what you've done is in, in your head you've made a narrative of of what certain people believe because of where they're from or, or their religious views and what you've done is you've targeted that specifically we've we've asked you about interviews with Klopp we've asked you about the the, the hierarchy we've asked you about off 
off the pitch, how we're competing, everything that that as a fan base we want to understand, and then why you guys are not bringing to to the media. Yeah, instead of you wanting to have that conversation and say, actually, look, we do hear you, and maybe we've made mistakes, and maybe this is where we can improve, or actually, this is why we do the things we do, and we we may say that's fair, that's fair, but actually, instead, what happened is they they like I say, they came in with a narrative of. And, and it was you who Sam unfortunately that had to receive it and you know and they they came in with a question at you that I felt was okay you guys aren't here to have a footballing conversation and I'm not going to say Chris I'm not going to say you guys but Paul you specifically you're not here to have a footballing conversation what you're here to do is is defend yourself by attacking someone and almost everything that I was saying before they joined which is let's not brand them certain names and and fit them under an umbrella almost telling me that I'm wrong because actually what you've done is is saying what them people are saying is correct, if, if that makes sense. Um, but what were your thoughts? Like, say you were eating and then people were telling you to come on. What did you think of it all? Look, for me, when I first came in, my first question, I think, was probably the most valid question of the whole space and the one question that everyone needed to know the answer to. Everyone. I just want you to address this. Just be honest. I went in and I said, do you think if you were more critical of the club, you would have gotten access to the club the way that you have, aka Klopp exclusives, aka exclusive with John Ekterberg, with Pep Linders, with anyone they want from the club, essentially? And he just waffled on for a minute and a half about moral morality. And then after that, the final answer was, um, Jurgen Klopp just likes us. And I was like, come on, Paul, let's not be disingenuous. And, you know, after that, the conversation just sort of, you know, moved in multiple different directions. But my thing is, look, I just need them to explain, to, to be genuine with the people. If they were more critical of the club, would they have gotten those exclusives? And the answer to that is, we all know, <laughs> is a no. And here's the thing, you know, this is this is YouTube, so we're not going to get political. But with the morality thing, my and Kurdish's basis and anyone with two logical brains uh, you know brain cells working in their mind will tell you we don't care about politics because no billionaire is moral full stop we if if no billionaire is moral why not get the billionaire who spends money and who gives a shit and yet people are like oh this guy these guys are bad because of this but these guys are not bad because of that Guys, I, I can't, I'm not going to mention specifics. Please go Google AXA, go Google Standard Charter, then come back, and then we'll have a real conversation about morality off this platform. I cannot do it because YouTube will red mark me. So from my perspective, I felt like we asked real valid questions, but it was almost like they're politically trained and, you know, to answer certain things in like a media way. And, you know, I actually got DMs from people who actually like to poke fun at me and stuff sometimes. And they're like, Hussam, you know what? These guys just dodged all the questions. They didn't really answer anything. You know, big up Nazario, I'm going to give him a shout out. Nazario, if anyone like says something against me, he would celebrate it because he has a massive Salah agenda. And I rattle him when I speak on Salah. This guy DM'd me. He's like, Hussam, they didn't answer a single question. Like, I know, they didn't answer a question, but what can I do? I ask them. I, I We did everything possible to ask them the important questions. And Kurdish as well, he'll tell you now that the question he, he asked, we asked important stuff. And for me, not a single one of our questions were, were, were answered. Instead, you know, I got a question back that got absolutely nothing to do with it because I'm not going to be the owner of Liverpool Football Club because I'm not a billionaire. If I was a billionaire, I wouldn't be on YouTube or on Spaces. I'd be on the beach somewhere, chilling, enjoying the sun. Instead, I'm wearing a hoodie at 2 a.m., going live on YouTube, and I'm freezing my ass off because the heater's on. It's different. It's different. You get me. If I was a billionaire, life would be so much different. I want to be a billionaire so fucking bad. I love that song as well. I love um, the things I never had. Hey, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool Football Club. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. It's just like we have to get used to 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 to, to this whole uh, thing. And, and you know, let me just ask the comment section something. Do you feel their opinions represent you? Don't write me life story. Yes or no. Simple. 
Um, so Kardash as well, we're gonna, I, I wanna ask you from your perspective, the questions that you asked and did you feel they answered them as well or, or, or not? Nabil says what happened was the deen done deal with Qatar. I will, tomorrow I will call the Sheikh inshallah and I'll call John Henry and I'll give you an answer. <laughs> Go ahead Kardash. I think, for, again, my, my disappointment was, was we, we didn't get a chance to ask, but when I asked the questions, and again, Chris was actually answering questions, but Paul had a, had a real sense of an turn of arrogance around it. So I asked him the question. So again, I don't want to go down the political route, but this really came about of, he came in and said, the reason I made the comment, and I said, I shouldn't have made the comment on the overlap because I was put on the spot and I, I was uneducated on the matter. Great. Thank you for that. But then he continued to say, actually, the reason I don't want these owners is because of LGBT rights, is because of how they treat women, blah, blah. A lot of personal reasons to him. And that's that's understandable. He grew up in a certain environment where there are certain norms and values that are allowed and, and they won't be allowed in a different part of, of, of the country. That's totally fine. But when I pressed him on it and I said, I said, so what gives you the right to speak and say you want owners with these views that, that align to yours? But then there are certain owners that you have in charge at the moment, such as Fenway Sports, who are sponsored by a group which literally fund weapons for Israel that go and kill innocent kids. What You're okay with that because it doesn't align to your own morals. Yeah, as long as your own morals are, are fulfilled, Paul, which is like I say, the certain things that he said, you're okay with that. And and he just laughed off in a, in a sense, real sense of, oh, it's what it is. And that to me, again, is where I lost a lot of my composure because... I, I go back to it. What gives you the right to think that you are entitled to have owners that align with your fan base, with, with you, sorry, and your personal views over a whole fan base in, in, in the Middle East? Because I'm going to say again, and I'm going to have to be respectful how I say this. The Middle East is much bigger than Liverpool. If you get the whole of the Liverpool fan base in Liverpool as a city, I'm telling you the Middle East Liverpool fan base is bigger. And the fact of the matter is they're going to have different views to what Paul what views what views Paul has. And I don't understand why Paul sat there today on a space and said, I apologize for what I said, but then doubled down on it and said, I want owners whose views align with mine. What makes your views more important than other individuals? What makes your views correct compared to a different part of the world? And this is where I think a lot of people lost their composure because the questions about football were not being answered. What the, again, I'm going to make it very clear. Chris, when he was speaking, spoke very well and tried to answer the question. When Paul came on, Paul came with the view of, I'm right. I'm, I, I, I'm going to sound right because I have this, this tone of arrogance about myself. And actually, when I speak in this tone of arrogance, there's nothing that you guys can say because as soon as I'm done, and it, this is when I said they were media trained, everything he said wrapped up with, but remember, we're all Liverpool fans and we want the best for the fan base. Every question they answered, which some of them were personal, questioning you, question other individuals, ensuring that what they said, which is his morals are more important than, than other parts of, of, of the world, which again is completely incorrect. He finished every question with, but remember, we're all the same Liverpool fan base and, and we're all uniting for the same goal. And I was just thinking... This is nonsense. And, and, and I said, I said, I said, this is nonsense. You are being media trained because the fact of the matter is you are not answering the questions that individuals address at. And I go back to this, Hussam. Sorry, I'm rambling, but I go back no, to this. No, 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 it's fine. He can, he can sit here and say, I represent myself on the overlap. But that is complete nonsense. When you turn on TV and put YouTube on or turn your laptop on or on your mobile, whoever it is in this comment section, when they see Robbie on the overlap, they associate Robbie with Arsenal fan TV. When they see Boovy on the overlap, they associate Boovy with Man City. When they see Paul on the overlap, guess who they associate Paul with? Red Men TV and Liverpool yeah. Football Club, right? So when you sit there, when you sit there and say, oh, but I, 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 I don't want these fans and, and the, the fan base that I know don't want these fans, that's speaking from your experience. And that is not correct because actually Liverpool, whether you like it or not, has a global fan base today. And that global fan base, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's in South America, are going to have different morals and different views on their ownership. And just because you have a set certain of, of beliefs or you've worked with certain groups that, that hold them beliefs, that does not entitle you to sit there and say, other fans don't want this and I want this. 
But again, they did not come. I, I think people are forgetting this. I had a lot of time to reflect on it. They did not come in there. And not they, but Paul. He did not come in there to have a footballing conversation. He already in his head had a narrative. And that's why he specifically asked you that question. Because mm. he, he, know, he knows... The Middle background. Eastern man. Yeah, yeah, the Middle Eastern man. Let me ask the Middle Eastern man about things that, that I know is specifically against his religion. Why? We're here to discuss football. We're here to talk about football and matters. It's actually for once, you've reached out to the fan base that for a long time, there's been a bit of a tension brewing. And this wasn't something that's just happened in the last month. This tension between top reds and bottom reds has been brewing for the last three to five years. Let's be serious. Let's call a spade a spade. And you had the chance today to have a serious conversation about football. And instead, what you did is you went and made it personal. And the reason and you, you made didn't it answer personal, any question either, even the football questions you that you were asked, you didn't answer. Absolutely. And to sit there again to say, Jürgen Klopp likes me. I'm sorry, he probably does. He probably does. But that in itself is an is a, is a interest of conflict because as soon as Jürgen Klopp has a bad game or, or a bad run, and you know I loved Klopp, but if Klopp goes on a bad run for six months, you're not going to come out and criticise Klopp because Jürgen Klopp likes you. And the reason he likes you is because you work with, with, the, with, with Liverpool Football Club, so you get these interviews. So if you're telling me Jürgen Klopp likes you so much, he gives you these interviews, in nine months' time, you're not going to want to ruin that relationship. So when things are going bad, you're not going to call him out. And this is what we're saying about Fenway Sports again. And you can see me get riled up again, because the fact of the matter is, the reason you're not calling out Fenway Sports is because they are giving you these exclusive. So let's not sit there in a space of, of 700 people and pretend that you're not getting these exclusives because... There are certain uh, things that you align to and certain things you don't say. Let's not pretend because, oh, I have a nice personality and Jürgen Klopp likes me. I promise you Jürgen Klopp probably likes a lot of people, but he doesn't sit down there for two hours and spend his time. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, and, and and I just wish I got an answer to that question. As this question as well, the, the same thing asked, are you even a fan channel anymore? All Many interesting questions were asked, to be honest with you. Uh, and this is why I felt like the, the reason why I felt a bit disappointed was it was just like every question for me was dodged. Every question was not really answered. And it's just like, oh, we're all Liverpool fans, et cetera, et cetera. Now, people, now I'm, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you guys this from, from before a while. So you guys know, in case it does happen. I spoke to Solitaire, who goes on Redman TV, who was a part of that space. And he said, let's have a more controlled thing in which we do three on three or something like that. I'm like, okay, no problem. Let's let's do a more controlled thing, you know, instead of it being six on six. So we'll try to, to do a thing in which, and I've already told him, the, the, the three, me, Kardashian and Ads, against Paul, Chris, and, 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 and Solitaire. And we'll have a conversation, three on three, without, you know, there being six on six or shouting or none of that shit. And for me personally, and I don't want to mention politics at all throughout this video because it's YouTube and they kill you if you mention politics. The thing is for me at the end of the day, me, my morals don't go along with the morals of people from East Europe, West Europe, South America, Africa, East Asia, Australia, North America. Pe people from all different sets of life disagree with the opinions of everyone in terms of that specific, you know, uh, sort of a topic or debate. But we all get together and we all watch football. So what we're saying is, this is once again an important preface. What we're saying is, if all billionaires are bad in some way, shape or form, just go and get the billionaire that gives a fuck. Let's go get the billionaire that has ambition. Let's go get the billionaire that spends money. That way, we both can be happy regardless of our political ideologies or thoughts or whatever. And look at PSG's owners and Man City's owners. It's not like they banned people of certain, you know, sexuality to come to the stadium or done something, you know, crazy. Because here's the thing. If Qatar does own Liverpool, and I really do hope they do, um, you know, now I have an extra motive for them owning Qatar. If they do own, if, if, if they do own Liverpool, it's not like they can change UK law or change the rules of the city, or do something crazy like that. They're just going to own Liverpool Football Club as an institution. And they're going to be making footballing decisions and financial decisions affecting Liverpool Football Club. Not 
UK as a country, it's not like they get a seat in parliament when they own Liverpool and they can make wholesale changes to the rules of the country. Oh, they're taking over. None of that shit, bro. Like they're just they're just literally just gonna be making decisions for a football club. It's as simple as that. So it's just it's just it's just for me the most disappointing part was when our questions wasn't wasn't answered at all. And actually wanna wanna go to the root cause in the words of, of my brother Kurt. The root cause. Today, me and Curtis were fighting along, along uh, on the same on the same on the same lines, you know. And me and me and Curtis have been involved with more hectic spaces. Like some of my post-match spaces, we get like a thousand, two hundred, a thousand, three hundred people in there. So we've been involved in crazier spaces, to be honest with you. And we've disagreed as well. But today we were on the same line. I dropped his line bar for bar as well, you know. And I get I said this is Curtis's line. I dropped it bar for bar, like word for word. I dropped it because it was it was a logical point, you know. That's why I'm blaming FSG all the time. Now, there's the million dollar question that I do want to ask, but let me just quickly read these super chats first. Chris says Paul got con- con- concerned and cornered, which he, if he, I'm telling you right now, if he answered that question that I asked about access, he would have turned around his himself. 360 degrees like this he would have beyblade like anthony on the pitch and he wouldn't score just like anthony it would have been perfect but he just dodged it tried to call him some a h phobe weak energy from him trying to make it personal i stopped wearing axa when i learned what they do bro i keep the same energy because i'm fsd out i have not bought a single kit i've not bought a single kit my last kit yeah, I haven't bought a kit, bro. I don't have kit. I don't. I don't have. I don't have the kit where we won the Club World Cup or the Premier League or the or the Champions League. And I don't have any of these kits, bro. The kits that I have are from the Luis Suarez era or from like the older eras and shit. Like Me I have, too. I have a shirt from the eighties. Uh, you know that's signed by Luis Garcia. Like I've got, I've got old shit, bro. I, I don't have any of this new stuff. I say I'm FSG out and I don't sit here and be a hypocrite. I'm FSG out and I don't put money in their pockets. I, I do my part. Simple as that. Uh, Chombe says they are more LFC fan in Ethiopia than in Liverpool. Bro, you know what it is, Chombe? In, in, in the Middle East as well, you've got the Liverpool fans in Oman, in the UAE, which is Abu Dhabi and Dubai, in Kuwait, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Syria. In in Palestine, that by itself, in Palestine, that by itself, already there, like half of those countries alone is more than the ones in Liverpool. Our problem was when you go represent Liverpool Football Club in 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 front of, of a whole lot of people, you cannot state that your opinion is the opinion of us because that opinion don't represent me. And by the way, Kurdish is like me really involved in the spaces and really involved with people all over the world. 85% to 90% of, of Liverpool fans do want Qatari on us. If you go speak to your Malaysian friend, ask him if he's anti-Qatar, he won't be. Go ask the South American friend, he won't be anti-Qatar. The, the African, the, the Middle Eastern, obviously, the, even people from your people from, I know Scousers who want Qatari owners. I'll bring you Tom Little right now. He wants Qatari owners. He's a Scouser. So <laughs> my, my thing is the generalization of like, oh, we want to do it the right way and all this. Bro, I don't, first of all, I don't believe in the right way. Football's a dirty sport. It's done. It's If this was the, the 70s or the, the 80s, I'd shake your hand. i say, let's do it the right way. But there ain't no right way anymore. <laughs> That's dead, bro. That's dead. There is no such thing as right way. Now to get Jude Bellingham, you've got to give his dad a job at the club. Right way, my ass. It's, it's done, bro. <laughs> Um, big up Kurdish. Um, very well spoken youth, still. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a youth, but I'll take it. Yeah, take, take it, it, take it. You know, that's that's good. That's that sign that you know you have good skin. So just take that as a compliment. <laughs> Sarif says it's, it's mad that people are FSG, and especially after the, the Super League. I promise you today, and I'm gonna say this, and 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 you know, it might even shock Kurdish, but I want to ask him a question next, you know. There was a guy today that spoke on the spaces. I don't even know if you heard him speak. Worse than Paul, worse than Chris, worse than any human being I've ever spoken to when it comes to FSG. Sam, yes. That man agreed with FSG for furloughing staff, agreed with them for trademarking Liverpool as a scouser, agreed with them about the Super League, 
And you're just sat here thinking, how on earth do you debate a human being like that? If you are defending a billionaire taking money from the government to pay off the woman that works in the cafeteria, wallahi, I cannot help you. Wallahi, I cannot help you. Yani, there is nothing I can say. There is, there is nothing I can say. Big up to Faris Dwery, who just sends in an, an, an empty super chat. Uh, but big up to you, Habibi. Uh, and listen, there's 342 people in here. Make sure you hit the like button, guys. Come on. Let's, let's, you guys already know the drill. See, I'm not stopping every second and telling you like, so you don't bitch. But get us to 200 likes as quick as possible. Please, right now, everyone, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're ready to do so. Big up to Chombe, Nabil, Chris, Messi FC, Sarim, and, and Faris Dwery. Thank you, Habibis, for the super chat. Make sure you like and subscribe. So now, Kurdish, root cause. Million dollar question. Why are you FSD out to begin with? You know, I will answer that. But just before I do, you know, with the Sam one, so I, I've not been blocked by anyone on Twitter. Top reds, bottom reds. Hmm. But Sam, in his first month, he blocked me because I had an interaction with him. But today, when, when he was speaking, I don't know if, if you heard if you heard him. He kept saying, you guys just want 300 million pound signings. And it's like... I'm, I don't think I'm God, I don't, but I know basic football knowledge and everyone on that t- spends on time on these spaces, most of us work and, and we have it as background noise and we come in and, and come out and actually we sit there for maybe five, six hours a day and we talk about football, we talk about players and and if you listen for, for five to ten minutes, you'll quickly realise nobody wants £200 million players every summer. What we do actually want is is footballing in people that can come in maybe, you know, for, for a steal. And we've sat there in them spaces, even as FSG out, where we've picked up FSG for, for buy, finding the right people on the market. And I, I don't like how some, and again, the, the people that he kind of associates with, look at us and label us as, oh yeah, all they want to do is just play FIFA and sign 200 million pound players. And it's, it's like, that's not the case. That's never been the case. And if you spent 10 minutes in these spaces, you'd actually understand that there are people here who generally know the sport of football. And there are people here who have the qualifications to back that up. We speak, we have coaches on the spaces. We have we have analysts on the spaces. We have accountants on the spaces. And these people talk about football and, and they t- articulate themselves very, very well, better than myself a lot of the time. Yet you want to paint us all and you want to come into a space with, with all of us in and just say, Oh yeah, it, that, that's it exactly. But and then say, yeah. oh, you lot just want to play FIFA and get two hundred million signings. And when we said to him, nobody wants two hundred million signings, and and told him what we would like, you know, sustainability, so on, so on, so on, he just skipped over it and went to the next point. And it's like we're trying to have a dialogue here, and we're trying to tell you that the, the, the things that you're saying, we don't want these things. We want different things, and we want to ensure that. Sam came out the the room. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like that. It felt like that. Um, <laughs> it felt like that, believe it or not. And you know what's funny about that card is the point that you just mentioned, uh, and, and I'll let you go straight away. There's a, there was Kenny, big up Kenny at the end of the space, who was like, you know what? I always had an opinion on FSD out people that I thought that they wanted us to spend 200, 300 million and triple the club. Today, I changed my opinion. I never knew that it was like this. You guys just want, bro, me and Kurdish right now, would have been jumping in the summer had we signed Caicedo and Nunes Matthias, that is, combined for 70 million both. We could have got them in June last season for combined 70. We would have been so happy. We don't give who told you we want this 200 million shit. We don't. Go ahead, Kardish. Sorry, but big up to Kenny because he actually fell back on his word as well. He did, he did. And this is this is, you know, I, I want to say sometimes spaces can become a bit of a, of a shouting space, but and, and shouting match, but actually. I love going on spaces and, and I'm sure you do, Hussam, and it brings a lot of a lot of individuals with different views on football together and, and it gives us that platform to actually speak. And, and again, I just felt today their side could have really made the most of it and could have could have really got rid of a few labels that are attached to them, if, if that makes sense. And instead of doing that, I feel like what they did is just ensure that them labels were, were correct which which was quite unfortunate. Um, but going back to your question, why why do I see them as the root cause, and and why do I want them out? For yeah. me, it's it's all about ambition. You always say that as well. Um, but when I look at these owners, they they're not here to continuously win and create a a dynasty. The objective for these owners is is money, and and that's the objective for every owner. 
But actually, these guys view football as, as almost, if I can get top four, that will continue to grow the the, the, the club from, from a marketable point of view. It makes them very marketable and, and you're in the Champions League and my brand is going up. And at the same time, you know, if, if, if we win trophies, great. And that's all fine. But actually, as a fan, I've been through the mud with this club. You know, I... <laughs> I uh, I was there for the Roy Hodgson days. I was there for for the end of the Rafa Benitez days. I was there for the Kenny days, and and have seen it all. And actually, when football goes in cycles, when you have an opportunity to have whether you like it or not, Sam, <laughs> the one of the best managers in world football at the at the current time, what you need to do is is make the most of that. You need to make the most of that. And when these owners are still behaving like they were behaving before Klopp came in. I start to have to question and then say, what's going on here? And the biggest thing why I'm FSG out, apologies for the analogy, Salim. <laughs> the biggest thing why I see them as the root cause, I know that's what Salim wants to hear, the root cause of the problem, is whether you like it or not. I said this earlier to, to Chris in the space, and then he, he just kind of went over it. To compete in football in today's market, you compete on the pitch, which is great. You have a good manager, a good set of players but you need to compete off the pitch. And I don't want to talk about, and I don't want to hear, but Liverpool's wage bill is higher than everyone because in any job, when you want the best people to achieve the best things, you've got to pay them the biggest salary. So if you want Liverpool to be competing for Champions Leagues, for Premier Leagues with Man City and, and Real Madrid and PSG and Chelsea, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to have to pay the same wages to keep them stars. Because if you're not paying Mohamed Salah 300 million, I promise you somebody else is. If you're not paying Virgil van Dijk 250 or whatever it is, I promise you Real Madrid will say, okay, here's 250, you join us. And these are the things that I, I, I'm FSG out for because when you look at the, 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 the root cause of the problem, you are not competing off the pitch. You, you're competing and making the infrastructure great. But the reason you're doing that is because when you do plan to sell, that's going to give you a lot of value, more money than, than you can imagine. So again, all you're caring about is, is the finances in your pocket. And I accept that. That's fine. But actually, you're now in a position where you can't even do that anymore because the club is going down the, the mud. Because the, 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 the club that you really wanted, which was to continuously get Champions League, you're not even at that standard anymore this year. I'm sorry to tell you that. And the fact... Uh, and this was one of the debates with Sam as well. People, f f we've already gotten past that we spend 200 million every summer point because no one thinks that. It's about sustainability at the top. Can you keep me at the top? We We... I can we can all get you a manager and an 11 and an ownership group that would get you to a Premier League title. Can you keep me in first place? That is what's different. That now you're talking, can I stay in that top place? That's where the conversations start. And from my perspective, as soon as FSG put us up for sale, they they literally proved me and Kurdish and anyone who has FSG out right. They said I cannot take you forward anymore because there is no reason for them whilst making record revenues to quit unless they're saying i cannot take you forward anymore and it's just the truth so for me personally i agree with, with every word kurdish says and this relates to what chan is saying as well my question is to, to to lfc fans that who do you love i like individual players managers or owners but uh, know this i love and adore liverpool F fc fsg that's the thing the football club comes before all this because kurdish was a liverpool supporter before club so was i um, when Klopp hangs his boots, inshallah, we'll be here and we'll be supporting Liverpool. Well, Liverpool fans, regardless, you know, it's not about Klopp or FSG or Salah or Van Dijk or whoever. Tomorrow they could sell Van Dijk. It's not like we'll support someone else the next day. We support Liverpool. We want the best for Liverpool. And this moment in time, with a track record of proving it, they have proven that they are not the people to take Liverpool forward. It's as simple as that. They have shown us that they can take Liverpool forward. And People think it's me and Kurdish and maybe even a younger generation thing. I know people who are 50, 55, 60, 45, who want FSD out and they're like, I was there during the Paisley era, the, the etc. era. Albert, prime example. He just wants, he wants these owners gone. There's people who have supported Liverpool since the 70s and 80s who want the owners gone because they have not been able to keep us at the top. And this is one of the things that they always mention. We got to this much finals. We finished second and 90 points, blah, blah, blah. Sports is about winning. It's not about how much points you get. 
15 years from now, no one is going to go like, oh, you remember that season when Klopp and the Liverpool team got 92 points? No one gives a fuck. They care about medals. Give me this. This is what sports is about. Win this. <laughs> Win this. You know, that's the only thing we have hope of as well, by the way, this season. Win this. You know, exactly. You don't get the trophy for finishing second. Um, Diogo says, yo, Curtis, big up. Look at you. Big so you big him up and you insulted him at the same time. <laughs> A big up to you, Diogo. Uh, and Nil Atwal, I think he's your biggest fan. He says, from India, Qatar in. Big also, up. Kurdish, KDL in. Big up to you, Nil Atwal. Big, big up to you. Big up to you. You got fans now, Kurdish. I think, I, think, I think this comment section probably shows you more love than anywhere else uh, on, in, in, in the world. Except Selection. He's the only one that always beefs you because he's club out. FSB cannot keep LFC. We outgrown them now. Prime example here, Jordan. He's a scouser. He's a scouser. He's FSC up. He's a, he's a prime example on this channel right now. He's scouts and he's FSG out. Also, they don't represent the opinions of all the matchgoers either. That was something that Ahmed mentioned on the space. He's a matchgoer and many scousers he does, does speak to are FSG out. Now, from their perspective, the reason they're not protesting is FSG have already announced they want to sell the club. So why protest? That's basically their logic, you know. But the, many matchgoers are FSG out, which is something that many people are are are... are you know, lying about. Selection says your manager is an enabler with FSC. I just that's mentioned not the combo he... today. That's not the and combo. He's spawned <laughs> and he spawned immediately. Uh, I worry for Klopp when he can't push the underdog narrative anymore. Here's the thing: simple 15 second response selection. Thank you for this. If we do get Qatari owners in, and and Klopp doesn't want to spend the money, and says I'm good with Henderson and Curtis Jones and these guys. Then Kurdish will be the first man to be Klopp out. Believe me. Believe before, me. Before Believe even me. myself, before you, said before anyone. People, listen, it's not about blindly supporting someone. Get me new owners in. And if Qatar comes in and says, here's 200 million, and he says, no, I don't want to spend it. I like Henderson. Now I'll be Klopp out with you and I will shake your hand and I'll say, Klopp, get out of my club. No problem. I will say that. And Kurdish, you feel the same as well? I'm telling you, I said it on your channel, Hussam. I think it was, when did we speak? Monday? All I want yep. is Klopp to have two windows. Two windows. And if these behaviours continue after two windows, my guy, I'm getting front seat on the Klopp power train. But I know for a fact, you give him the back in, and that manager will not behave the same way. I know that. I know that. See? We're not, we're not delusional. Look at Selection. Look at selection. I don't believe Kurdish yeah, sure work, but that. Kurdish lying. <laughs> Look at that. this guy. <laughs> selection, selection behavior. I, I really do. I really do believe Kurdish. I think if if we do get to a, to a level of money where we can spend as much as we want, and he still is like persistent on on certain said players that we all think are crap, then it's just we'll all be clop out. I, I think this entire comment section will start clop out. You know, we can ask this comment section right now. If Klopp was given 300 million and he didn't want to spend it this summer, would you be would you be Klopp out? I think most of the people would probably say yes, to be honest with you. And and me as well. Like if Qatar comes in and goes like Klopp here's 300 million, fix Liverpool, he's like, nah, I like Henderson. Bro, no one's supporting that. No one's supporting that. Like we're all against it. Anyway, just before we head to the final segment, big up to Nerutva says, Yes, I want to see Klopp with Pep's money, then I'll judge him. Exactly. Now, there's two elements. If Klopp doesn't want to spend Pep's money, me and Nilot Pal and Kurdish will fight him. He will fight Jürgen <laughs> Klopp before the selection opens his mouth. Don't worry about it. But let me see him with that money first. That's what, because a part of me as well, there's a, there's a personal reason. A part of me wants to just see it and then go like, was it actually his fault? Was he the guy like responsible for all this? Was he an enabler? It answers all questions when you think about it, you know. Big up to you, Nilot Pal. Thank you so much for the super chat, Habibi. Uh, Zlatan says Redman TV and Alfred Rapper are lost cause. FSD do not take money out, but executives make crazy bonuses and dividend payout year after year after year. Here's the thing, and I want Kurdish to, to take this today. They were shocked that Liverpool have a high wage bill. Kurdish, can you break that down to the people and tell them why we have a high wage bill? Well, this, this is why I lost again. They say, "Why do you lose your composure?" But it's you say things like, "We have a high wage bill." Of course you do. You've been telling me for the last two years you've got the best eleven players in the world. Can you can you imagine? That's like me. I don't, I don't know. If, I'm sure you have KPMG and Jordan, right, Sam? 
you know, do you have KPMG? What's KPMG? KPMG is one of the big four accountancy firms in in the UK. So they're they're massive. If you're an accountant, it's one of the biggest goals usually. So it's like me going to KPMG and saying, right, I need you to to, to look work on this project. I need your your best consultants, and I'm going to pay them each three million, which is way above market rate. And then they give me the guy who's just joined the company for two weeks, doesn't know the, the structure, doesn't know what processes to follow, and is asking me questions such as, so what do you value your business at? And it's like, I've hired you to tell me what I should be valuing my business at. You know, I'll be going mad. And these guys want, want us to not have a wide wage bill, but they still want to think they're the best 11 players in the world. It doesn't make sense. The fact of the matter is, in this game of football that we're in, if you want to remain at the top, which is what we want to do, you need to keep your best stars, which is your Virgils, your Salas, your uh, your Trents, your Allisons, and you need to pay them the big bucks. Because if you don't, Hussam, do you know what's going to happen? In the summer, there's going to be a knock on the agent's door, and he's going to say, Allison, they're only paying him 150k, but they were paying him that when he joined, and he's won you a Champions League. He was man of the match in the Champions League final. He's won you a Premier League. He's got the most clean sheets. Do you know there's there's a club in Spain and they're saying they're going to pay him 300 grand. And as an agent, they're going to give me a 15 million signing on bonus fee as well. So do you want to keep him or should I get rid of him now? You know, sh shall I take him out of your club now? And and it's it's such a redundant point to, to make to say we've got a high wage bill. Of course you have. You have the one of the one of the best squads, one of the most decorated squads in world football. So of course these players are going to ask for what they're worth. It's not it's not difficult to add up. It's not rocket science at all. No, no, this is the thing. It's it's so easy. And if you want to continue on that trajectory where you're one of the best teams in the world, you're going to need to get players to join these guys. And guess what, Hussam? Guess what? You're going to have to pay these players big wages too. Because if you're not, Chelsea are going to pay them big wages. Man City will pay them big wages. Manchester United will pay them big wages. There you go. You're telling me if you're Alison Becker, you're, you're reading that. If you're reading this and you're going, David De Gea is getting 300k and I'm on 150. Am I a fucking dickhead? Do, 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 does John Henry think I'm a dickhead, respectfully? I've been the best keeper in the world for the last three years. And I'm getting half of a guy who, who, who can't pass with the ball. Literally, David De Gea gets the ball, looks around and, and, and hoofs it to, to, does a Jordan Henderson, hoofs it to a throw-in. And he's getting paid more than me. He's getting paid more than me. What are we doing here, man? It, it's, 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 it's insane. People want like to drive a Ferrari, but they want Toyota tires. It just, it just yeah, makes sense. It's, it's what, what you said. How, how, how can you have like all of us last season, you know, we got the best center back in the world, the best right back, best, best goalkeeper, best right winger, best player, some people said as well. Of course, you're going to have to pay more money than a lot of clubs, man. What we're saying, if Klopp remains uh, on one prem with new ownership when it's 10 year hands, Klopp ain't the guy to build a dynasty. Our guy at Brighton, okay? The Deserbi prop continues, and I respect he's, it. He's a I good manager, Islam. He's a good manager. I know he is. Selection <laughs> has been like just all over the Zerbi thing from day dot, from the first day. Here's the thing, selection. Once again, this goes back to what we already said. If Klopp doesn't spend the money and Klopp doesn't want to improve the squad and Klopp doesn't want to take us to the next level, then we'll be Klopp off. I'll be with you, bro. I just want to see him with Qatari ownership that can look him in the eye and go like, you're wrong. We're going to buy a midfielder anyway and you're going to work with him. And now let's talk. Now let's rock and roll. Let's see. And if he doesn't deliver, then we'll all be Klopp out because we want Liverpool to be successful. It ain't about just Klopp being successful. And you know, and I'm sure Curtis feel the same way. And uh, Narish says FSG sold 11% stake in FSG without appointing banks, one billion percent. This time round, they have appointed two major banks, definitely full sale. These banks charge money. Narish, first of all, thank you so much for the super chat. This is the first time I see your name. Thank you for, for joining us. Second of all, bro, I agree with you completely. The point the the, the moment they pointed the uh, Stanley and, and Goldman Sachs, you just knew like it was going to be a full sale. And this is one of the things that I always think about. Or at least, or even if it's a, here's the thing you need to understand. LeBron James owns 2%. FSG own 98% of, of the football club. So even if Qatar buy 50% of Liverpool, essentially they're the majority owners. So 
I think there's a disagreement in percentage now because here's the thing from a financial perspective, and this is when you know people come in and go like I could teach you finance, bro. Like please, like people just think people are dumb just because we're on spaces. I'm a chemical engineer, bro. I can make your factory go from costing this much and having this much output to doing it times 10 exactly how and you're making you a lot more money when it comes to 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 fsg they're bastards but they're smart bastards basically they're thinking in their mind qatar is going to come in and they're going to fix this football club so i want to eat a piece of the piece of the chocolate cake and i want a big piece i don't want a small piece so they're just disagreeing over percentages but i do i do believe that we will eventually get sold because they want to move on to the whole nba nfl thing which i think everyone knows i'm club out already i'll tell you why he has no ambition and no demand that he's too comfortable at his job and he's a sellout like redman chombe number one thank you so much for the super chat number two i have no problem with being I have no problem with people being club out. This guy does right here, club defense league. He does, I don't. I have no problem with people who are club out. Personally, I'm not club out, but it's a it's an opinion that people have. For me, I just want to see club with money. I want to see club with ambitious owners, and let's see what he does. Because for me, club with ambitious owners, then I I will judge him uh, properly. And finally, Gunban says if club gets sacked under FSG, Lenders gets the job. So I'm 100 club. <laughs> There you go. The grass, isn't is always greener. the grass isn't always greener. I've been saying it. <laughs> Honestly, if Pep Linders ever becomes manager, I'm Linders out the moment he gets appointed. The moment he gets appointed. It's not good. And you know one thing, Sam, I'm going to I'm gonna do a little bit of a monologue here and I promise I'll wrap up quickly. But no, no, go for said, it. Go for it. I said this earlier. I said this earlier on the space and you need to remember when these owners come in, they, as you said, they're not they're not making laws. They're not changing what what you can do in the UK, what you can do in Liverpool. What they are doing is actually they're looking at how they can make their investment grow. And I'm telling you, all you need to do if you're a Liverpool fan and you live in Liverpool and you have hesitations or you're scared about owners from from the Middle East or whatever, you just need to look across the pond. Look across the pond. I lived in Manchester for ten years before these guys came in. Ashton, respectfully, was was not a massive area. You had, you know, th- there was work being done. You look at that now. Manchester is is the second city in the UK for a reason. The amount of investment these guys have made in the city, the amount of investment that they've made in Ashton, the amount of investment that they've made in, God, I can't even remember the area now, but just the area before you go in, Ins- Inslinton. You all of a sudden look at Manchester, like I say, before these guys came in, Manchester was just a good city, it was a big city. Now it's one of the most cosmopolitan cities in in the UK. After London, it's Manchester. It has more European, um, more European um, um, workers in the city. It has a huge Arab population because they come in for education. It has a lot of... um, uh, businesses both both from the Middle East both from from Europe and actually what it has done is is enriched the city by 10 times you speak to any Mancunian any person from Manchester even if they're a Manchester United fan you've heard Gary Neville himself what them owners have done for the city is nothing short of fantastic I'm telling you if you ever just look at Manchester 10 years before now and and now it's a completely different city. And actually what they've done is they've gone in, they've looked at the surrounding areas. They've said, how can we improve the surrounding areas? How can we put money into the city and how can we make the city better? And that should give you an example of what Liverpool can achieve. Don't be fooled by the narrative of the Middle East has certain views. That's great. That's how they want to live. Let them live like that. I'm telling you, if these owners come to Liverpool, they're not going to tell you how to live. They're not going to dictate how, how you want to live your life. But what they are going to do is they're going to put a lot of businesses in the city that's going to make the city a lot of money. They are going to enhance the area around Anfield, which FSG have neglected for their whole tenure. Let me tell you, I've speak to some people who, who work in consultancy, and I know for a fact Liverpool City Council are not happy with FSG. Liverpool City Council are furious with Fenway Sports because they have not developed the surrounding area of Anfield as they should have done. So actually, when we look at these owners, who does more for the city? 
has it been Fenway Sports that's done more for for Liverpool Football Club, or has it been the the Arab owners at, at Man City? I'll tell you who it has been. It's been the Arab owners. Who's already making huge investments in Newcastle? It's the Saudi owners. So let's not pretend. Let's not pretend that Fenway Sports have been good for Liverpool on the whole, because Tom Little will tell you himself they have not done enough for the city of Liverpool. Yet you speak to, like I say, a Manchester United fan, and they will tell you what these Man City owners have done for the city. We are very grateful because they have taken the city to another level. You're now Manchester is now competing with London, believe it or not, and that's because of the investment of these cities. So, do not get, do not buy into this this narrative of they have certain views. That's great if they come into your club, as you said, with Sam. They can't make laws. They can't have specific laws in Liverpool where certain people can't do this and this. No. What they will do is they will make your city better and at the same time, they will give your club a chance to compete off the field as you're doing on the field. A hundred percent. And, and, and you know, we, we've had so many city fans that we've spoken to and they speak always of the stuff that the Arab owners do around the, the city. And it's just, it's just the, the truth of the matter. They improve around the city. They improve around even just the stadium itself. All of that. It's just, it's just, it's just... It's just obvious, to be honest with you. It's a and narrative. It's a lazy narrative. It, it, it is. It is because the way that, the way that people move in Qatar doesn't mean because you are a Qatari owned now you're going to move like that in Liverpool. It's just just silly logic. Simply put, record books doesn't look at context. I don't know what, what you're referring to there, Gagandi, because I know Gagandi himself is out as well, so I'm confused with this guy. What do you think he means, guys? Do you understand really put records with look at context. And I think he's talking about finishing second. You know, when you look at the record books, it doesn't care oh, about yeah, yeah, how you finish second. You know, 100%. it's did you win the trophy or did you not? <laughs> Jordan says Origi done more for the city than FG. That is also categorically true. And I believe Origi should get a statue as well, but that's me, me being emotional right there. Big up to you, Jordan. Thank you so much for the super chat. Look, man, for me personally. The, the, the biggest problem at Liverpool, Klopp has been a problem this season, and that's where me and Kardish disagree. To which extent do you blame him is where the part that we disagree. But for me, the biggest problem, of course, is, is FSG. And the fact today, if I said 10 years later, the, the fact that they have no basic understanding of football and they didn't think that that was problematic showed me that maybe I'm, like you cannot, you cannot. You can have debates and shit, but if someone is that illogical and tells you 10 years later into owning a restaurant, you don't need to know the difference between a T-bone and a ribeye, then you are in problem, my friend. I'm not saying they need to know about the bin service, as, as Chris mentioned. I'm not saying they need to know about, about table sizes. I'm saying football, the food itself. Have a basic understanding. Get involved. Pretend. Act. Act like you give a fuck. You know? Like, just showing up to one game a season. And here's for me the moment where I realized this really is going anywhere, nowhere. I said, do they even know we're ninth? And they're like, does it matter? It doesn't matter if they know, know or not or not. I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Well, you, can't, you can't have a conversation with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care if our owner knows if we're ninth or not. Yeah, what, what can I do? You know, it's, it's oh. like when, you, when, when you're arguing with a friend and then a shisha cafe and you can't get to it and you just go, khalas, I'm finished. Khalas. 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 So many times you've said khalas. You just you can't. You just can't. I've just done more for that man than the club. I just wish he answered that fucking question. That question is still, it's sitting on my nerves, the fact he didn't answer it, Captain Sal. And thank you so much for the super chat. Captain Sal and Gunben coming through today. Eh? Big up to you both. Anyway, listen, we're going to wrap it up here, you guys. It's been an absolutely fantastic stream. Everyone watching us right now, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you forget to do so. And right now, please like, like, subscribe, subscribe. Big up to Chon Bay, Nabil, Chris, Messi, C, Sareem, Faris, Dwer, Shukran, like Habib, Diogo, Jordan, Selections, Latan, Narsh, Gunben, Gagan Deep, and Captain Sal for sending in super chats. Big up to you both. One final one before we let uh, the people know where they can find Carlos. Realistically, they don't know how much... They don't need to know how much about their investment. They put people in place to work on their behalf. That's just good business. I can't lie. That's cap. Because football <laughs> is a totally different business from any business that you mention. I'm not saying if I open up a restaurant tomorrow, I have to go and be the head chef. I'm saying I need to know the difference between a T-bone and a ribeye. That's, that's as basic as it gets. I'm saying at least have a basic understanding of the sport. 
Do they know the offside rule? Do they know what a corner flag is? Do they know where the goalkeeper plays? Do they know that the goalkeeper has a different kit? I'm just, I'm just asking the basic questions. From people I know that, that do know people around FSG, they tell me that Linda, actually his wife, probably knows more about football than him. And that tells me all I need to know. 100%. 100%. 100%. Big up Linda. Big up Linda. <laughs> so, Kermish, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Where can people find you? Anytime, brother. Um, it's just Kajish Ball 93, man. You'll you'll find me on the spaces. Like I say, I I'm on there most of the day. Just I'll be working and I have this background noise. So you'll find me on there. As always, man, subscribe to this channel. As I as I say, the Don's doing a lot of work for you guys. It's it's all the time, you know. So you've got to put respect on on the work ethic. So yeah, man, subscribe to this as football. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much, Kardash. And look, anyone who didn't catch Kardash is, is, is at, just go to my announcement tweet and you can find that great guy, you know. And you know, here's the thing with Kardash. You'll find me and him agreeing 100% on something. Tomorrow we'll disagree and we'll kill each other. That's the best part, you know. So, <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe, guys. And I don't know, I might take the day off tomorrow. I might go out. I don't know, you know. So that's why you need to hit the notification bell. See you guys. See you. Take care, guys.